and welcome to another episode of the Weekly Sizzle. Today I want to talk about three stories that were on 1851 this week that I think deserve a second look. The first story from 1851 I'd like to highlight has to do with local marketing spend. The question everyone wants answered is, how much should I spend when it comes to local marketing? Unfortunately, there's no one easy answer. It depends, it's different for everybody, but there are two things to keep in mind when you're putting up your budget. One thing is that you want it to be targeted. You don't want to just throw things against the wall and hope that something sticks. So make sure you're targeting exactly your demographic, your potential audience, the people you want to bring in. Two, you want to make sure it's measurable. Um, even after you target what you want to do, you need to make sure that it's working, that it's actually bringing these people in. So. No matter how much you spend, and obviously the goal is not to spend too much, you want to make sure that you're getting as much bang for your buck as possible. So it pays to focus on things like effectiveness and um, using data and, and you know, local numbers to find out exactly who your customers are, how to bring them in, and then make sure that you're actually doing that. Um, the second story I'd like to talk about is really kind of the foundation of PR in general. It's the idea of using people to sell a brand, using people to tell a story. Any company in the world can talk about how great they are about making the best burger or the best pizza or offering the best service, whatever that may be. But no one really trusts the brand. They expect them to exaggerate, to uh, only show the good things while hiding maybe the not so good things. But when people hear another person, a person like them, talking about the brand, talking about their experience, telling their own personal story, it resonates. And that's the way it's always been. So I, I do think it's very important for brands to leverage the people they have, franchisees, and use them in their marketing. It's, it's a huge tool right at their fingertips that a lot of brands sort of let slip through the cracks. If you have a great franchisee, someone who is succeeding with your business, someone who's doing well, someone who's growing with you, you should put them out there. You should be introducing them uh, and letting them glad, ha glad hand a little bit to uh, sort of spread the gospel of your business. Um, at the very least, it can be a very effective and very affordable way to make your marketing that much better. The final story I want to highlight has to do with sort of, once again, the melding of old school marketing and new school marketing. This time the story is focused on Safeguard. Uh, Safeguard does a lot of things having to do with businesses and one of those things is uh, print services. Now in today's digital age, a lot of people sort of assume print is dead. In fact, a lot of people have been saying that for many years. Um, it's just not true, especially for small businesses that don't have the digital capabilities of larger companies. Print remains an incredibly effective uh, marketing tool. Also, after talking to some people at Safeguard and uh, some of their subsidiary companies, it sounds as if print is sort of coming back, sort of having a renaissance. The pendulum is swinging the other way just because there is so much digital stuff out there. Our emails are just getting pounded with uh, new mail every day and it's very, very easy to click the delete button. However, when you get an actual piece of mail, it's a lot harder to ignore it. You tend to stop and open it and see what it's about. I mean, unless it's obviously just junk mail. Um, so the idea is that as things become more digital and we become uh, more reliant on digital tools, print sort of takes on more power because uh, it's more rare and it, there's a physicality to it that you just don't get from words written on a computer screen. It's something you can hold in your hand. It's something that you can touch and feel and sometimes smell if it's hot off the presses. Um, and that can be an incredibly valuable tool when it comes to marketing. So I definitely think that while brands need to do everything they can to embrace the digital revolution, they also need to make sure that they're not letting uh, the, effectiveness, the effectiveness of print fall by the wayside. Thank you for watching and tune in next week for another episode of the Weekly Sizzle.